God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Scriptures proclaim that the only way to God through the Father, Jesus Christ, the only way to get to heaven, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And when Jesus says, no man cometh unto the Father, that is God the Father, God Almighty, in his dwelling of heaven. The only access you have to God is not Mary, is not religion, it is the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts 4.12, there is no other name given amongst men whereby ye must be born again. You were born to die. The wages of sin is death. You will come from your mother's womb and go to a grave pit. You will die because you are a sinner. The wages of sin is death. And God is not God is long suffering. He's not willing that any should perish. God saw your and my condition as sinners. And in his love he sent his son. His son is the only sacrifice that God will take, will approve the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. There's no other means to get to God the Father but by Jesus Christ. And yet the Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? Hell. Jesus Christ, the Creator who made hell, said that hell was for Satan and his angels. And yet man in his disobedience to the commandment and word of God has put himself in a position to be placed in hell by God. Now God will not cast you off into hell, you rejecting Jesus Christ. You will yourself be condemned to hell. For John 3 says, For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He that believes on Him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. See, you are already condemned by God as a sinner. And if you were to die in condemnation, the wrath of God will be bided upon you, and that wrath of God is a place called hell. And it need not be so. For God sent His Son to die and shed His blood that the payment of sin might be made. The Gospel is that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Now what is better than God's gift, Jesus Christ, in the Gospel? What can you do more than what God has already done? Because Jesus is God, and God is Jesus, Acts 20:28. 20, that blood was God's blood. And you're going to have the nerve to step up to God and say, Your religion is better than Jesus Christ? And 
the words of Jesus Christ according to the Bible, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. But Lord, didn't we cast out devils? Lord, didn't we eat in your presence? Lord, didn't we? Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. That's what God's going to say to your religion. Amen. You want me to try Mary now? Because Mary can't do it. Matter of fact, Mary says in the Bible, the Gospel of John, whatever my son says, do it. That's what Mary said. Respectfully, she is the mother of Jesus Christ, but not one apostle and not Jesus Christ ever gave her the time of day. When it came to salvation, when it came to doctrine. When Jesus is on the cross, Mary is so important in salvation that Jesus said to John, Take her home and take care of her. She couldn't even take care of herself. And I'm not respected I'm not disrespecting Mary, but as a means of salvation that can't do. And yet God sought the need and God met the need that humans have. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And there's nothing you can do as man to, to improve that. Because the Bible says, not of works, least any man should boast. Now, boasting is a sin. So you're going to go to heaven and say, look at what I did. You'll be proclaiming your sinning. Pride and arrogancy is not in the room of God. That's a sin. And if we go to the place where this is what I did, this is what you did, and then there'll be room for envy. That's a sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now heaven's a place not of sin. It's a place of righteousness. It's a place of holiness. And you've got to be washed of your sins to get to that place. And if you're going to get to a place where you're going to compete on what you've done, you've got boasting and envy and fighting and strife. Those are sins. And they will not get you into a place of glory. I'll turn to my church. I'll turn to my priest. Another sinner. You're going to turn to a sinner to relieve you of your sins. That's like a man that has leprosy turning to another man that has leprosy. And please, clean, my, clean me. Man cannot save man. But the man Christ Jesus is able to save you. And give you eternal life. Man at one point through Adam and Eve were sinless perfection. And yet they still disobeyed God. And we became sinners. And now we are credited with our sins. And we need to be discredited by the charge of Jesus Christ that had paid the payment already. The payment for your sins is upon the cross of Jesus Christ. And He died according to the Scripture. And He was buried. And He arose again the third day according to the Scripture. Now you may say, Preacher, I'm not bad as a pedophile. I never killed anybody. And yet Adam condemned and cursed Adam and Eve by taking one fruit. One piece of fruit has brought the sin curse into the world that we have today. It's not that you murdered somebody. 
It's not that you told a lie. It's not that you committed fornication. It's you are a sinner. All sin is sin. There's no degrees of sin. You are a sinner by a sin. One sin makes you a sinner. And you've got to be relieved of that sin. And the relievement of that sin is not nothing you or any man can do but Jesus Christ. Your sin death and the rejection of Jesus Christ will have God throw you into hell. Because in all cases you are telling Jesus Christ that you are better than He is. And that is not the case for man. God has set His love upon us that we might dwell in His abode by His Son, by His rules, by the free will that God has given us. If you want to go to heaven, you cannot do it by your own brain power. And what I mean by your brain, whatever you think, God does not care what you think. God has never asked your opinion. God is the Almighty God. God is the Creator of us all. God is the Judge. God is the God that sets the rules, no matter what you think. Or I think. And he has written in his Bible, the King James 1611 Bible, that if you want to be saved, that salvation, Acts 1631, is only by Jesus Christ. That's it. And what you got to be forewarned, the scriptures also tell us that there is another Jesus. There's another gospel. And there's another spirit. We are warned of them three things because religion can kill you. And yet Jesus saves. Religion is man-made, but Jesus Christ is God-approved. The only one that will accept religion is Satan. has many plans and ideas for you to get to the false heaven. Yet Jesus, chapter 7 of Matthew says, Matthew chapter 7, Enter ye the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth into destruction, and many there be which go thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. Few be there that find it. When it comes to your death, you've got two ways. You got two ways after your death. You got the broad way, or you got the straight way. The straight way is Jesus Christ who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And that's the words of Jesus. That is the straight gate. And fruits of what got us in trouble where we are today. Adam and Eve taking that fruit that God said, do not eat. We are in sin conviction because of rebellion. And yet God says today, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And you are disobeying God still. Six Six thousand years and man has not changed. Adam and Eve rebelled by 
doing something that God said not to do. And you Americans are rebelling against God by not doing what God told you to do. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I love this farmer's market because it brings us back to the fruit of sin. You're not going to live forever. You will die. And when you wake up in the gates of hell, you can't come back. It ain't a video game. There's no reset. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. He died, was buried, and woke up in hell. And it's still in hell today, the Bible records. And a man in hell is recorded in Luke 16 that he is in torment, being tormented, wanting the grace and the mercy of God and will never get it. And yet the Bible says, if you were to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved, you will be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Behold, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Salvation is to be wrought today because you are not guaranteed tomorrow. You're not even guaranteed this afternoon. And after this, death, judgment. And the only way to pass the judgment is by the blood of Jesus Christ. Behold, now is acceptable time. Now. Jesus says, God, let us, come now, let us. Because you're going to die and we don't know when death is going to come. But death is more sure than taxes. Your death will prove that you are a sinner. And for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son because you're the sinner. And the love of God is still merit as you continue to reject the message of the Bible and yet the Bible says for God still loves you. That the offering is still there for you to be saved. That after death, you cannot make your choice. There's no sampling of hell. You cannot go into hell and come out and say, Okay, now I believe Jesus, I believe it. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And once you enter into the devil's hell, you will believe it. But you'll never come out of it. And would it be tormenting enough if you would remember every Saturday you've heard the gospel? You have been told what to do. It'd be like somebody coming up to you saying, Excuse me, can you tell me how to get to Deland, Florida? And they give you the directions. And you end up in Deland. Great. You go up to somebody and say, Excuse me, how do I get to New Smyrna? And they give you the directions. But you say, You know what? I don't believe these directions. I'm going to go about it my own way. And you end up lost. And you end up not going where you wanted to go. That's your fault. But see, when we preach the gospel, we're not ask, 
you're not asking us. God says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. God saying, hey, they don't know where they're going. You go tell them where they're, where they're going. And I'm going to tell you, without Jesus Christ, you're going to hell. With your religion, you're going to hell. And the only way to get to heaven is by the Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God is Jesus Christ. There is no other way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And if that's found in John 14, 6, written in red, if your Bible has the words of Christ in red, that Jesus said, I am the only way. And you're going to march your butt up to God and say, hey, look at me. Look at what I did, God. And God will say, Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 is the suffering servant, Jesus Christ, that he suffered for our sins. The Bible records that when Jesus went to that cross, with all the brutality and the beatings and the whips, he was beyond recognition of being a man. The Bible says that his back looked like a, a field that had been plowed and busted up. Now, some of you Americans are so stupid, you don't know what a farm is, you think everything comes from the grocery store. You've got to beat, you've got to grind into the dirt to get a seed. And according to Mark chapter 5, according to Mark chapter 5, we are planting that seed that was on broken ground, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now that seed can be taken away out of your heart by Satan. Well, I've seen that week after week after week. You don't even realize it that your father, Satan, John 8, 44, is here right now. He's here. He's got you about other business instead of the gospel business. Oh, don't listen to him. We got pizzas on sale. We got wonderful strawberries instead of Jesus. Oh, hi, Chuck. Long time no say. Uh, let's start talking and not hear that guy preach. Oh, you guys are just stupid. Yeah? You wish you listened to the Word of God, which you think is stupid, the day you stand before God. Another excuse you cannot use to escape heaven or hell, because this one right here is you want to escape heaven or hell, is by saying there is no God. Well, let me tell you what the Bible says. The fool has said in his heart, there's no God. How about this one? Prepare to meet thy God. Now, wouldn't that be great for you, Mr. Atheist? The day you stand before God that you did not believe in, and your jaw drops down to the ground, And that God that you don't believe in tells you because you have not believed on Jesus Christ because you wanted to be a fool in Psalms, go to hell. Why do atheists proclaim Jesus Christ as a cuss? Science doesn't believe in Jesus because this entire universe came from nothing. That's atheism. Of the Big Bang.
thing is nothing but atheism because it came from nothing. Well, an atheist doesn't believe in nothing. Yet the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. Now that God is not Mary. That God is not Allah. That God is Jehovah, Jesus Christ. Religion has another Jesus. Religion gives you many means to can't be saved, but think you're saved, and yet you'll be condemned. And we stand here opposed to religion with the fact is that Jesus saved. And there's no other way. And if you were to read and study your Bible like the Bible says, you will come to the conclusion also that the only hope that man has is the blessed hope, and that's Jesus Christ. And you don't even realize, I see a group of people, you are making the Bible real to me. By you scorning and rejecting and going about your business, you are written in the page of the Bible that Jesus already said that they would do that. The Bible has already said, who has believed my report? And broad is the way that many should go, and I see many people that will not believe the report. And some of you think, well, I'm okay. I've got whatever i got. I don't need that Jesus. The guy's a fruitcake. And the Bible says, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you after he gave you a list of religious things to do. Matthew chapter 7. And you don't realize that the greatest enemy we have, it's not ISIS. It's not the Democrats. It's, G uh, it's Satan. The greatest enemy is Satan because he's been working with man for 6,000 years. And he knows how to deceive. Satan has been working on mankind since Adam and Eve, and they fell to him. And again, when it comes to the realm of religion, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And, the life. and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. There is no cash, check, or money orders to get into heaven. It's the precious blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. If you have never asked Jesus Christ to save you, you have a debt that needs to be paid. That debt will be paid by Jesus Christ or you burning in hell. If you want to pay for your own sins, you will pay for them eternity in hell. And some of you do not like the preaching of hell, but yet Jesus preached more about hell than he did about heaven. And without Jesus Christ, that's where you're going. There ought to be no other messages but hell until you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. There's two kinds of people. There's fans and there's followers. Amen. Yep. The followers turn from their sins and, yep. you know, Everybody can believe, but you got to turn from your wicked ways and walk in His ways. That's right. That's the problem with the world today. Yep. Most people never read the Word. Uh-huh. Yep. I hope you're enjoying this breezy day, because there's no breeze in hell. Matter of fact, if, you were to, if the rapture happened today or soon... And you live in the tribulation period, there's a time where there'll be no breeze. 
And wait till you see the scorpions. And wait till you see your rule, your world ruler, and what he'll do for you. See, the event is we don't know when the when the rapture is going to happen. Salvation of Jesus Christ may not only save you from hell; it may save you from the great tribulation period. I don't preach much about that because I don't know when it's going to happen. But I will preach what the Bible says to preach, the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus died for our sins. According to the scriptures. What has your religion done according to the scriptures? He was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. He was the son of a virgin. Try that one. Walk up to your religious leader and say, Mr. Leader, Mrs. Leader, do you have a mother and a father? Is your father God? And if he says yes, they're a liar. You see, the one that can only save your soul has to have a mother and God the Father, no human father. That's the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. And it may be silly to you, but you won't be laughing when you're in hell. Another thing about Jesus is that he has to be God to be your Savior. There can't be God and then the Son. They have to be one. With the Holy Spirit. Salvation rests upon the one that is God, and God is the Savior, Jesus Christ. I don't know why God has set in my heart today, but it's a particular reason that He wants me to show Jesus Christ outside of man's religion. Religion is the fastest way and the deceivable way into the lake of fire. You can think you're saved and not be saved. And that's the greatest danger. I hope you're not relying on, I said a prayer with a preacher. Because that won't save you. I have other means to get to my heaven. That ain't going to save you. You've got to have the love of God. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Salvation rests upon God and the Son, and they are one. Have you been to the blood of Jesus for the cleansing? There is no other cleansing of your soul but that precious blood of Jesus Christ without spot. That sinless blood of God, Acts 20, 28. There's no other way. And I know you can hear this big mouth. And it hurts to realize that most, if not many of you, who have heard the gospel, are still going to go off in the lake of fire. And you're never going to come out. 
And you've accused me of being of hate and anger. And yet you don't know what love is and you don't know what joy is. Do you realize that there are people in hell today, the Bible says, the Bible says, Luke 16, that they are egging us on to preach to you? Your loved ones in hell say, will you listen to that guy? Will you adhere to his message? Because when you join your loved ones in hell, the Bible says they're going to hate you. And they're going to hate you more because you've had the preaching week after week after week after week. Hell's not the place for friends. Come on, the Bible says it's a lake of fire and brimstone. Oh, I want a party there. Well, the next time you have a bonfire, we'll jump in the fire with your friends and enjoy it. You can't have alcohol in hell because alcohol burns. And there's no bar in hell because wood burns. And yet you have a chance today to get out of hell. By the gospel that Jesus died for your sins. According to the scriptures, and he was buried, and he arose again, according to the scriptures. You see, I've got the same message week after week after week. It has not changed in 2,000 years. It is true, it is true God's word. It does not mean to be modified. It does not need to be changed. It is that Jesus saves. In reputation that your ears are hearing the same words week after week after week. It's in your heart. The seed has been planted. What are you going to do with it? Either I have planted the seed, or I am watering that seed. Or Satan is taking the seed. Now some of you are probably Christians and have no idea what I just said. And you don't care. And yet the most important thing that God has given Christians is to take His gospel to the world. Someone may have been here last week that will never be here again. I hope they've gone to heaven by the message. And yet probably the facts are they're probably burning in hell. And the worst thing about being in hell is that you have heard what God says how not to go. And yet you go. Your flight of death is warming up. You are heading to the gate. That gate may be today. You may have today the words are, Now departing.
And the only ticket for that flight to take off to heaven is the blood of Jesus Christ. No ticket, no plane. No plane, you drop. Into hell. And hell cannot be this earth today. Your life cannot be hell because you got air conditioning. You can get H2O in a bottle. That's not hell. Your life is nowhere near hell. Now, if you got three de third degree burns on all of your body, okay, I will say you are as close as you can be to hell. Living. You don't know what hell is. And yet we can't even glorify how wonderful heaven will be. See, we were all born to die. And what you do in your lifetime will declare where you go into eternity. The Bible says there is none good, no, not one. For all have sinned. All have come short of glory of God. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God is offering you a free gift. That free gift is eternal life through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. It's not something to refund or exchange. You have the free will to take the free gift of God, Jesus Christ, and do whatever you want with it. You can say, I'll take that gift, I will receive that gift, I will enjoy that gift. Glory to God. If you do that, the Bible says, even the angels in heaven rejoice when you do that. Or you can say, hey, I'll take that gift to God, I'll exchange it for Catholicism. I, I'll, I'll take that gift and I'll, I'll, I'll be a Baptist. Or I'll give blood every time I can give blood instead of that gift of God. Or I'll give money to UNICEF. Or I'll take that gift and say there's no Jesus, there's no God. I'll take that gift of God and I'll rely on Donald Trump. I'll take Jesus Christ and I'll hope to get eight more years of, uh, of Obama. I'll exchange being a Christian because I'm an American. And yet that gift of God is going to determine where you go when you die. Now, if you receive and open and take that gift, Jesus Christ, you will be absent from the body and present with the Lord when you die. If you exchange that gift for anything else, the hell with you. Go to hell. You will go to hell without Jesus Christ on your own merit. And you need not to. You need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And one last thing the Bible says over religion. 
These things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. Religion cannot give you a surety of where you're going when you're going to die. Yeah, God bless you. Glad to see you back again. Thank you. I know by the salvation of Jesus Christ, I know where I'm going to go when I die. Your religion, you don't. And I know you don't, because I grew up in a religion. I grew up as a Polish Catholic. Never had any hope of eternity. And yet the Bible says these things that are recorded in this word that I hold in my hand. These words have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. If you don't know where you're going to go when you die, if you got questions, you need to get that question answered and get it answered now. Because as I said, death is coming. There's a problem. You don't know when it's coming. You have no idea. And it'll be a miserable thing for you to drop off in hell today after hearing the gospel. And your loved ones, again, will hate you for doing it. Luke chapter 16. of sin is death. Cannot not sin. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. A gift is free. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Giving of God is the Lord Jesus Christ. Eternal life. A free gift. We stand on this side of the road offering you something that is free that I cannot give you. It only comes by God. And that which God is offering that is free is of His love. If you want the love of God and hate the message of Jesus Christ, you do not know what love is. You don't know what true freedom is. This country celebrates freedom. And through God, I celebrate the freedom from sin. In my freedom of sin, I will never go to a place called hell. And yet, if you remain in the bondage of sin, if you continue to go on with your sin without God's gift, you will carry your sin into the lake of fire which burneth forever. You will pay for your own sin on a price that you can never pay for your own sin. Now you say, preacher, that's contradictory. How can I pay for my sin and not pay for my sin? You will pay for your sin in the lake of fire that burneth forever. And you will 
never get out because you can never pay for your sin. The Bible speaks of that as being tormented in the flame. In the absence of relief. And yet there is a free gift. There is the love of God. And it's the Son. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, what must you do to be saved? Acts 16. And the answer to Acts 16.31 is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord said, the gift of God's eternal life to the Lord Jesus Christ. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? Hell. See, we were all born. We will all have a birth year on our tombstone. And yet, on the tombstone, there's also a date that you're going to die. You will die. Sadly, it may be today. We don't know. And yet, the Bible says, come now... Let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. You cannot come in the presence of a holy God as a sinner. There's something that is crap that people say, Oh, God hates the sin and loves the sinner. That is crap. That is a lie. Because if God loves the sinner, why are there people in hell paying for their sin? The love of God that loved the sinner is in John 3.16. For God so loved, past tense. You put a D or E-D at the end of a word, that's past tense. For God so loved the world. That He gave His only begotten Son. If you reject Jesus Christ, God don't love you. And at the closing verse of John chapter 3, He that hath not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abide. Now if you got the wrath of God by not having Jesus Christ, how can you say God loves you? Come on! You that come up with these stupid things. How can you say the wrath of God when you don't have Jesus and then turn around and say, well, God loves you? you got to think before you speak. you got to look before you hit enter. Because without Jesus Christ, there is no love. Without Jesus Christ, it is hell. And yet the love of God is that He tells us in Mark 16, Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Now what is that gospel? The Bible says in Corinthians that Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures. And He was buried. And He arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the gift of God. The gift of God is at Calvary. It is Calvary's tree, not the Christmas tree. God has something that is free for you. He's not going to demand you to receive it. He's not going to force you to receive it. He's going to let you decide if you're going to receive that gift. Now, there's something about that gift. The gift of God speaks. If you did not know that the gift of God has something to say, in John 14, that gift says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So the gift that God gives you, free, is the only acceptance you can get back to God. And there's no other gift like it because it fits all sizes, all ages, all races of people. This gift of God is for those who have been born of a woman. Because you are born in your sin. As the sparks fly upward. If you were born of a woman, you are going to die. And that gift of God is being offered to you for... God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever, there you are. If you have been born, you are whosoever today. God doesn't even acknowledge your name. You have no name outside of Jesus Christ. And yet, if a man does what God tells him to do, we know his name, Lazarus. And I can go through the, the epistles of Paul and read all the names that Paul wrote about people going to heaven. And you can't find one name of one man that's burning in hell today. It's a free gift that you must take, you must believe on, to be saved. It is the only thing that will offer you eternal life without perishing. That gift is free, and it's the love of God. That, that gift will bring you to God. For there is one mediator between, man, between God and men. The man Christ Jesus. That gift that God is offering you, His love, is the only reconciliation you have between you and God. Your sins are separating you from God. Remember, the wages of sin is death. You are a sinner. And God does not want to have anything to do with you in your sin. Because He's holy. And He says, Be ye holy. As I am holy. That's God speaking. And yet Adam and Eve stole one thing. And they became sinners. To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Book of James. I'm telling you where you can find this. Now see, you got a problem here. Before you came to the farmer's market today, you may hey, I never sinned. Yeah, I'm telling you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, it's a sin. So according to James, when you hear me preach the gospel and you reject the gospel, you are now a sinner. And your rejection of God's free, loving gift, Jesus Christ, the, the mediator between Him and you, the rejection of that gift is why a man will go into hell. God's not willing that any should perish. Hell was made for Satan and his angels, Jesus said. Those people that are here right now, if you die and go to hell, you are doing it on your own merit because God has sent the Bible to you. And when we say believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, that is the good way. That is the right way. That is the truthful way. And James says to him that knows do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. You're rejecting Jesus Christ after hearing the good way. You are now a sinner. You can never say, I'm without excuse. I never knew. Because I've told you what God expects from you. God expects from you, by a free will, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no other way. 
There's no other gift. There's no other mediator. There's no other love outside Jesus Christ. There is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. That name is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Going all the world and preach the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. If you think that's bunk, if you think that's stupid, if you think anything other than I'll take that, don't say you're going to heaven. You can't say you're going to heaven and think the gospel is unbelievable. If you cannot say right now, the only way I have righteousness, the only way I can get to God is Jesus Christ. If you can't say that, you fill it with something else, you will burn it out. Unless you turn to Jesus Christ and be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I am offering you God's gift, and this gift lasts all eternity. It never goes away. This is life insurance and death insurance all in one package with Jesus paying the premium. Satan's way is like auto insurance. You've got to keep paying, keep paying, keep paying, keep paying, keep paying. You never have the auto insurance company say, Hey, stop, stop sending this money. We'll do it for free. And yet God's insurance through Jesus Christ is, Hey, you don't have to pay nothing. It's already paid. It's free. Not one utility company say, Hey, we're going to give you free service for the rest of your life. No. But God says, My utility is through Jesus Christ. I'll pay for it all. Don't send no money. I love when I get, every once in a while, a utility bill says, send no money. And the balance is zero. And yet the next month I get a bill and i got to pay it. And with Jesus Christ, the balance is always zero because it's already been paid by the finished work of Jesus Christ upon Calvary's cross at the empty tomb. I never have to pay anything. And if you choose to reject that gift, like your utility bills, like your insurance bill, you will get that bill time after time after time after time after time after time in hell for all eternity. You'll never pay that debt off. You can't. Because the holy, righteous God took that payment for you, Acts 20, 28. There's nothing more finished than the one that said, it is finished. And that's the words of Jesus on the cross. And you're going to walk up to God, the free gift, Jesus Christ, and say, you know, you said it was finished, but let me finish it more. Ridiculous. When was the last time someone gave you a gift and then you said, well, I'm going to go buy more because it ain't good enough? That would be insulting. It would be insulting for you to give your wife roses and she'd go, oh, no, these, you know, these not good enough. There's too few. They're not the right color. And yet you do that with the gift of God, Jesus Christ. It ain't right. It don't fit. It's not what I like. It's not what my church teaches. I don't believe in Jesus. And you make a mockery of God, and be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. You mock God today, and he'll mock you later. Proverbs chapter 1. The scorner. 
You laugh at God today, and God will be laughing at you. Proverbs 2, I think. And Psalms 2, I think. Or Proverbs 2. It's in there. I believe it's Psalms chapter 2. God will, you don't want God to laugh at you. As you laugh at God. And yet this free gift, God is offering. God is reaching out. He has told us to go into all the world with the gospel. And He died for your sins. He was buried. And He arose again according to the scripture. That is the gift. You open up that gift. And in that gift is a cross and an empty tomb. And your ticket to heaven. No ticket, no entry. No blood, no heaven. See, God's salvation is a bloody salvation. The blood of Jesus Christ which cleanses from all sin. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. There's a gift. That gift of God will provide all that you need. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. For I have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. And not only is Jesus with me, Scripture with Scripture, He's in me. The Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ are recorded to be dwelling in me. The Bible also says, as a born-again Bible-believing Christian, I am seated right now in heavenly places. The Bible also proclaims, that the fools and the foolishness of their mouth will be condemned. The free gift of God is free, no attachment. It has been signed with the blood of Jesus Christ in the last book of life. There's no other way to God, for Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. That free gift, that is God, that's the love of God, that reconciles, paid the premiums, is the only gift that God will receive for your eternal soul to be saved. And that gift can be received right now while you're living. You can't take that gift when you die. You can't. Once you die, it's too late.